And I want to welcome you to our Mothers Out Front Massachusetts Climate Action Call. My name is Diane Sokol. I'm a member of the Brookline chapter and also part of the statewide campaign team. For those of you who are not familiar with the Mothers Out Front Climate Action Calls, in the next 45 minutes, you will learn about a specific climate issue and we will take focused action together. Today, we will be focusing on the Massachusetts 529 College Savings Plan and the need to align the investment options in this plan with the Commonwealth's climate goals. We need this for our children's future. We have some important updates to share. We've made some progress toward our sustainable investment goals, but we need the help from all of you today and your networks to keep pushing this message to our state leaders. Next slide, please. Before we get going, I'll quickly go over a few norms for this meeting. Please rename yourself in Zoom to include your name, your city or town, and if you like, an organization <clears throat> you're with. Be sure to mute yourself when we are together in the main room if you are not already muted. You can use the chat to share comments or questions during the call. Closed captioning is available and you should be able to access that tool at the bottom of the screen. And finally, we are recording this climate action call. If you do not want to be seen in the recording, please use the Zoom controls to turn off your video. So we do have a full agenda today. First, Mothers Out Front member Jess Bryant will quickly share an overview of the Mass 529 College Savings Plan, and she'll share some of the progress and the work still, be, still to be done to have fossil fuel free investment options added to our college savings plans. Then we are pleased to welcome a special guest speaker, Grant Bradsky from As You Sow, will talk about the tools that his organization has built to make it simple to identify fossil fuel companies and other potential objectionable holdings in our investments. After that, Sue Stafford will explain our actions for today and we will have about 12 minutes to take action together. We will close with a few final announcements and we do hope that you will stay until the end. I will now turn it over to Jess. Great, thanks Diane. Um, all right, so hi, I'm Jess. I'm a member of the Mothers Out Front Corporate Responsibility Action Group. Um, but today's call is being hosted by a coalition of advocates that have come together with a common interest uh, to invest in our kids' futures without investing in fossil fuel companies. Uh, we are grateful to be working with our partners, and we want to welcome all of you from our partner organizations, Elders Climate Action, Third Act, and 350 Massachusetts. Um, we know that we are more powerful together, and today's call puts that power into action. All right. And also, before I dive in, um, because we're talking about financial information today, um, I did want to make the disclaimer that Mothers Out Front is not an investment organization, and I am certainly not a financial advisor. Um, so nothing presented today shall constitute or be construed as offering financial or investment advice. All right. Um, and so with that, I'll say I had um, I have a young son. I had him two years ago. Um, and soon after giving birth to my son, I wanted to start saving for his college education. Um, so I was introduced to 529 college savings plans, which are savings accounts designed specifically to help families save for their kids' future educational expenses. They are tax advantage savings plans, similar to 401ks or Roth IRAs. Um, each state has its own plan. Massachusetts' plan is overseen by MIFA, which stands for the Massachusetts Educational Finance Authority, um, and it's managed by Fidelity Investments. Um, all right, so 529 plans generally have two types of investments. Uh, the first is static, um, where funds have a, a fixed investment strategy over time. And the second is age-based, um, where funds transition from being more aggressive in their investments to more conservative um, as a child gets closer to attending college. Um, all right, so it's important for me to invest my values by making sure my son's college savings account isn't supporting the companies driving climate change. Uh, so I spent a fair amount of time um, looking under the hood as to what companies um, are part of the Mass 529 investment options. Um, and I discovered that, so for the Massachusetts 529 age-based portfolios, they can be made up of up to 9% fossil fuel companies. Um, and this includes companies like ExxonMobil, Chevron, and Occidental Petroleum. 
Uh, Massachusetts off also offers a static portfolio, which is called the sustainable portfolio that has sustainable features, as, as they cause it, call it. Um, but even this is around 3% fossil fuel company holdings, uh, including Marathon Petroleum, uh, Corp, and Valero Energy. Um, so I saw this. It was a non-starter for me. Um, so I complained to my state representative, uh, who recommended reaching out to Mothers Out Front for help. Um, that triggered about two years of advocacy work with Mothers Out Front and our coalition partners. Um, and to make a long story short, um, we've made significant progress. Uh, so Fidelity and MIFA plan to add the Fidelity Climate Action Fund next year to the Mass 529 um, investment options. And that's great news. So Massachusetts will finally have a fossil fuel-free 529 investment option. Um, and this uh, the specific mutual fund will be available for other states whose 529s are managed by Fidelity, uh, should those states choose to adopt it. Um, so that's great news. There's also some less great news. Um, this is a static fund, so we still lack a user-friendly age-based fossil-free option. Um, and this fund also has high fees compared to other Massachusetts 529 options. Um, all right, so there's some work to be done. Uh, I think before we take action today, um, I'll say I had to do an incredible amount of work and I sunk a lot of time into figuring out um, what companies were actually underlying the 529 investments. Um, but you don't have to. So there's this amazing organization, as you so, which is really one of the leaders in fossil free investing um, that's made tools that are you make it very easy to understand what companies are underlying your investments. Um, and we have Grant Bradsky from As You So here to show us how to use those tools and teach us more about fossil free investing. All right, and with that, I'm passing it off to Grant. All right, so I'm gonna just get into the presentation here. So hi everyone, um, my name is Grant Bradsky and I work at As You Sew. So. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with our work, um, As You Sew is, um, yeah, has been working with corporations for over 30 years now to help them be become more environmentally and socially responsible through the power of shareholder advocacy. Uh, so we work with some of the largest companies in the world on a range of issues like climate change, um, ocean plastics, racial justice, environmental health, and sustainable investing. And so that's where I work. I work in our sustainable investing program. Um, let's see, change slides. So um, yeah, our investor values program rates mutual funds and ETFs based on their exposure to environmental and social issue areas. Um, and so you can use our tools to find out your exposure to these investments, um, including uh, some of the investments in your 529 plan. So today I'm gonna be talking about how fossil fuels and other risky industries end up in our 520, uh, 529 plan investment options. Um, I'll also take you on a tour of our Investor Values uh, Fossil Free Funds uh, investment tool, so you can find out your exposure to uh, fossil fuel companies and also find sustainable alternatives. And then I can also talk a bit about the demand for sustainable investments and why investors are increasingly avoiding these types of financially risky investments. This is just our disclaimer. Again, um, we are also uh, a nonprofit and not a financial advisor. Um, so this is for educational purposes only. So um, we're talking about, you know, how what we invest in today will define the world, what would the world will look like tomorrow when our children in our lives are ready to start school and enter into their adult lives. Um, the problem is that most of us have no idea that we are investing our savings, our college savings in companies that are profiting from the pollution of our skies in the destruction of our forests forest and the manufacture of weapons of war. Um, sure, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir when I say that fossil fuels are responsible for driving the climate crisis. Uh, in fact, 100 fossil fuel companies are responsible for over 50% of global emissions since the start of the Industrial Revolution. Um, many of these fossil fuel companies are embedded inside of 529 plan investments. Uh, this includes companies like ExxonMobil, Chevron, Shell, ConocoPhillips, and BP. Now, how this happens, um, 529 plans, as well as our individual retirement accounts and um, 401k plans, 
typically invest, uh, invest in mutual funds. Um, so these can be thought of as baskets of stocks. Um, oftentimes, mutual funds invest in hundreds, if not thousands of companies. Uh, and typically, when you look at your fund prospectus or your fund summary, it only lists the top 10 holdings. So it can be really hard to understand what's under the hood of your investments. Um, as, Jessica, uh, as Jessica described, the MIFA plan is invested in static funds and age-based funds. So these mutual funds are created by asset managers um, like Fidelity and BlackRock, who uh, develop, maintain, and sell these financial products. Um, this chart below kind of shows the total dollar amount invested in fossil fuels by these asset managers. And you can see, uh, if you look at Vanguard, BlackRock, and Fidelity, uh, their combined total investments in fossil fuel companies worldwide is almost a trillion dollars, and they're using our money to do so. So I'm going to show you how you can find out your fund exposure to um, these fossil fuel companies. So this is fossil free funds. Um, we have seven different um, environmental and social investment tool products. This is kind of our flagship product that we started back in 2015. So if you go to the homepage, um, you can type in the name of your fund here. Um, also just to preface, this is obviously being recorded and we also have some uh, tutorial videos that I can point you to afterwards uh, in case you wanna dig a bit deeper, but I'm just gonna give you just kind of a preliminary tour of our tool. So if you type in the name of your fund, um, you will see your fund pop up. If it is in our um, on our website, you can also type in the ticker, which is kind of this series of uh, letters, which is linked to your fund, and you'll be brought to the fund uh, scorecard. And so you'll see that on the left-hand side of the page, you'll see your fund grade. Um, so this Fidelity 500 index fund is actually currently offered in the MIFA 529 plan under the individual investments. Um, and you can see that this fund earns a D grade because it is invested almost 9% in fossil fuels. Now you can learn more about our, our methodology by clicking on this link, but essentially um, we give A grades for funds that have 0% exposure, so no fossil fuel holdings, and then increasingly poor grades for the higher percent exposure to fossil fuels. So you can see if you're invested in this Fidelity uh, 500 fund, you are invested in companies like ExxonMobil, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, Duke Energy, um, we also show you the total dollar amount invested in fossil fuels through this fund, which is a little over $48 billion um, across 58 different fossil fuel companies. So you can also use these buttons to learn more about where these fossil fuel investments are coming from. So this is the Carbon Underground 200, which is the 200 largest oil and gas companies in the U.S. You can click to see all here. Uh, a lot of investors may be surprised to learn that they're invested in coal companies um, like American Electric Power, Dominion Energy, uh, as well as fossil fired utilities. So these are uh, electric companies that are using fossil fuels to um, produce energy or distribute natural gas. And finally, we show you the um, all of the fossil fuel holdings inside of your fund. So it's extensive. If you scroll down a bit further, uh, you'll be brought to the sustainability report card of your fund. So as I mentioned, we look at not only environmental issues like fossil fuels and deforestation, but we also look at social issues, uh, companies that score poor or well on gender equality, uh, companies that are invested in nuclear weapons, um, military arms manufacturers, um, as well as private prison companies. So you can click on any of these to learn more about your fund grade across our issue areas. Um, you can also see the financial performance of your fund as compared to a benchmark. So this is a similar fund. Um, you can look at different time horizons. Um, and then finally, in terms of fossil fuel companies, um, we also rate banks that are financing these fossil fuel companies uh, expansion product uh, projects and insurance companies that are insuring, uh, insuring fossil fuel expansion products. Um, so you can, you know, you can learn more about the methodology here, but you can see this, this fund earns a C grade because it invests in companies like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley. So obviously 
these are the largest banks in the world, but they're also expanding fossil fuel projects at a time where we need to decrease um, the expansion of fossil fuels in order to reach um, Paris aligned targets. Um, so that is kind of a brief overview of the fund scorecard. If you go to the um, search settings, our, our, our tool here, you can actually sort funds um, based on different search criteria. So say you wanna find funds that have a positive financial performance of 15 years. Say your, your grandson just entered elementary school and they're gonna be entering college in maybe 15 years or so. Um, you can look at that. Um, let's say we also don't wanna be invested in any fossil fuel companies. And I also don't wanna be invested in you know companies that are deforesting the Amazon and Indonesian rainforest. So you can get a, a deforestation grade of an A. And you'll see that all of these funds are then auto-populated at the bottom of the screen. So these are all the funds that meet your search criteria. Um, you can also sort these funds by their financial performance. So you can see how well they perform across different time horizons, as well as how they score on different sustainability issues. And another really powerful tool that we have is kind of comparing these funds side by side. Um, so if you click compare here, um, you'll see that these funds will then pop down to the bottom of the screen and you can compare these funds side by side. So um, I've already done that with a couple of funds so we can test this out. So this is the Fidelity 500 index fund, which is in the MIFA plan. And then this is also the Fidelity Climate Action Fund, which was just added to the MIFA plan. So let's look at how these funds uh, kind of compare side by side. You can... Um, at the top, we'll show you kind of the share class overview. So this is kind of just the general summary of the funds, how much money they have invested, um, the, the expense ratio. So this is how much the management fees are for the fund. Uh, and then you can see how the fund is graded across our issue areas. And you can see that this climate action fund has better grades across every almost every issue area. So. Um, this fund earns a B grade just because it has one fossil fuel holding. Um, but I was speaking with Jessica and she mentioned that you are all working with Fidelity to remove that holding. Um, so this will be completely fossil free soon enough, thanks to your efforts. So that's really amazing. Um, and then also importantly, you can see how these funds uh, score financially. So you can see this Fidelity Climate Action Fund. It's a, it's a newer fund, so it doesn't have five to 20 year returns. But you can see that this fund across one year actually outperforms this index fund. And then the returns to date, you can see that this uh, Climate Action Fund has over 2% more in returns compared to this Fidelity Index Fund. Um, it does have higher fees, but these returns are net of fees. So even with a bit higher of uh, management fees, um, this fund is still out outperform outperforming this Fidelity uh, Index Fund. So definitely a lot to kind of navigate on our websites. As I mentioned, I can send links to um, to our tutorials and also I'm happy to kind of work with any of you one-on-one. <clears throat> -on -one. If you have any other questions, I'll, I'll leave my email afterwards. Um, so that was the tour. Uh, just to kind of wrap things up here, um, there is an increasing demand for these sustainable investment options that we've seen on our site. 80% um, of individual investors, 99% uh, of millennials are interested in sustainable investment options, and 54% uh, of investors plan to increase their sustainable investment options uh, just this year alone. So really exciting stats there. And then um, Jessica shared this slide with me uh, and Essentially, she asked Fidelity if she if you all could um, survey some of the 529 investors to see, you know, what the demand is for these types of fossil free investment options. Um, almost 80 percent are interested in a fossil free investment option. Sixty five percent they would even said they would even be willing to pay higher fees um, for an investment option. And that kind of leads into the fact that, you know, there's still this conception that you have to sacrifice investment return to invest sustainably. Um, but that's just no longer the case these days. Um, there was a, a Morgan Stanley study of 11,000 mutual funds showing that there is no financial trade-off in the returns of 
sustainable funds and traditional funds. Um, in fact, sustainable funds are actually 20% less risky. Uh, there was also a, another survey conducted this year uh, looking at the returns of sustainable funds, and they actually outperformed their traditional funds by 12 to uh, 8 to 12. You know, 12, the sustainable funds garnered 12% in returns as compared to their traditional funds of 8% this year alone. So, um, yeah, you really don't have to sacrifice investment return to invest sustainably. Um, and that is why many institutions across the world are moving away from um, fossil fuel investments. Um, University of California decided to remove all of their fossil fuel holdings. Um, and that's because fossil fuels are underperforming the broader market. Um, they were actually the worst performing and most volatile sector of the economy over the past decade. Um, and so again, you really don't have to sacrifice returns to invest sustainably. Um, so that kind of concludes my portion of, of this um, meeting today. If you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you do have. And I'm going to pass it off to Sue now, who's going to be going over today's action. So thank you so much for having me. And yeah, happy to answer any other questions you have. Thank you, Brad. That was, that was terrific. Um, in case you didn't remember everything, <laughs> we will be sending out um, cheat sheet with you know links where you can can um, go back over this stuff at your leisure. Um, I don't know about you, but I didn't remember it all. Um, so now let's get our heads back to what we're what we're doing here today. We are asking Fidelity to give us both a static and an age-based low-fee fossil-free fund in the MIFA 529 offerings. Fossil-free because we want to save for our, our loved one's education without um, funding the companies that are putting their future at risk. And low-fee because why should we be charged a premium for investing our values? And why age-based? Because that just makes it... Um, User friendly. It means you can kind of set it and forget it, and it it manages itself beautifully right up until your child reaches college age. So it is time for action. Oh, there we go. Let's tell what we're going to do is tell Fidelity that they should be a leader and not a lagger. Um, in fossil fuel investments. Today, there are three actions. We're going to have you sign a petition, send a letter to decision makers at Fidelity, and then there's a bonus action. We want you to share our action toolkit with others. Um, a link will be put in the chat. When we're done with instructions, go to the chat, click on the link, and you'll be off. Please note that the link on this slide is not active. Go to the chat for the active link. Okay. Where's my slide? There are three. My slides, I've lost my slides. All right, here's action one. We're going to sign a petition which will be delivered to MIFA and Fidelity. The link to the petition is in the toolkit and the link to the toolkit, as I said, it's gonna be in the chat. What you see on the screen now is what you will see when you click on the link to action one in the toolkit. We're hoping to gather thousands of signatures. So please sign it today and share the link wide widely. The purpose of the petition is to let MIFA know that there's demand for fossil-free 529 plans. That's really important to MIFA, and it's important to Fidelity to, to really move them on this. That petition is gonna be delivered with a well-designed flourish when we've gathered enough signatures to make it meaningfully meaningful. So sharing the petition with friends and family, even from other states is helpful because that raises awareness that there's a national demand for this. Now, if you're not sure whether you've signed the petition before, sign it again today anyway. We will eliminate duplicates when the time comes. Action two, we are going to write a letter 
that you will, we're going to ask you to write a letter that you will print out and send it through snail mail, you know, the regular U.S. Postal Service. We've learned from Fidelity themselves that paper letters get more attention than emails. So we're going to ask you to um, write a letter, print it out, and send it through the mail. What you see on the screen is what you will see when you click on the link to action two in the toolkit. There are three steps here. Write a letter to Bart Grenier. He's the head of asset management at Fidelity. Print the letter, put it in an envelope and mail it. Then email us to let us know that your letter is on the way. Start by writing the address that you see in the toolkit. You'll also put that address on the envelope that you use when you send your letter. Next, compose your letter. We've offered some suggestions for how you might personalize your message. Personalizing it is really, really important. Let Mr. Grenier know that you're a real person and that this is an urgent request. So write it, print it, mail it, and then email us letting you know that you sent it. If you don't have access to a printer, or if you just rather send an email, you can do that, or you could do both. If you're going to send an email, it's the same three steps. Copy the addresses that you see in the toolkit, write a subject line, and then draft the message. You copy the message out and put it in your own email, draft the message, personalizing it, which of course is very, very important. And then there's a bonus action. Share the toolkit with others, with your friends, with your family. Let's get as many people pushing on fidelity as we can. We know this works because it's already worked. So we just need to do it some more. You'll be receiving a follow-up email later today or tomorrow, and that's gonna make it simple to forward it on to people in your networks. So all set, click on the link that's in the chat and away you go. Please turn down your volume so we can all take these actions together with minimal disruption. If you have questions, just turn your volume up, volume up and ask your question. We'll be here to answer it. And then remember to turn your volume back down. If you're really struggling with technology, don't worry. You'll get all these instructions by email later today. But if possible, get it done right now. Just do it. And at 1240, we'll all return together and close out the call. So let's go. Deb, will you put the, the uh, link into the, the chat? And away we go. Turn your volumes down. So we'll close this out. So we'll be done by 1245. And you'll have plenty of time afterwards to keep working. Um, so thank you all for joining together to take these actions today. Together, we do have power. We know our voices make a difference, and in this case, we've been asked by MIFA to raise our voices. So thank you for doing just that. Every month when we take action together and speak up a bit louder, a few more decision makers sit up and listen. That is the power of this movement. So later today, you will receive a follow-up email on the next slide. It will have the toolkit we shared today. It will have a copy of these slides and a recording of this call. We encourage you to forward that email to your network. Tell your friends and neighbors about what you've learned today about 529 college savings plans and the need to invest in fossil fuel free funds. And as we've said before, you can send this email to colleagues across the US who might have these 529 plans. I so, have a question. Can, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm noticing at the bottom of this e this mail it says CC to these other people, but I don't have their address. We'll we'll handle that later. You can stay on after the call. Thank you. Um, so Mothers Out Front hosts a welcome call the second Friday of every month at noon time. The next one is this Friday, October 11th at noon. If you've ever asked yourself what more could I be doing to stop climate change then you can join us on this call. We will work to help you identify the U-shaped hole in this movement. We want to help you find ways you can use your unique talents, your skills and experiences 
to build a stronger, more effective, more inclusive movement for change. So join us on Friday if you can and bring a friend. And finally, we want this climate action call to be a regular part of your calendar. Our next climate action call will be on Tuesday, December 10th. We are skipping the usual November climate action call as we know that many of our participants will be busy over the next month with get out the vote efforts and along with tracking a potential climate bill at the State House. So do add the December 10th date to your calendar and watch your email for other possible November action alerts and a link to register for the December call. So thank you so much for joining today. A big thank you to our speakers today. And really thanks, especially to all of you for joining and taking action together. We look forward to seeing you again on Tuesday, December 10th at noontime. And anyone with additional questions can stay on for a minute or two after this call. But to everyone else, goodbye and see you in two months.